Our, uh, our next speaker is uh, Louis James. And uh, you, you may know Louis as a hard rock analyst with the Casey Research Group. Um, and uh, he, of course, has done a great job with that. He travels all over the world. He's been to more mine sites than anyone that I can think of, with possible exception of Brent Cook. Uh, he's a very good uh, hard rock analyst um, and has been a very kind friend to me for many years. I asked him to come speak to you about something that I just simply thought was too good to be true. And I'm gonna let him give you the details. But the bottom line is, it's essentially a way for you to illegally avoid paying federal income taxes. And if that sounds as good to you as it does to me, I hope you'll welcome him. Welcome to Fantasy Island. <laughs> I, I've got to do this. Basti plan. <laughs> and if I was Doug Casey, I would actually light this. But I'm not a smoker, so I'll just put that back in my Guayavera. I am in uniform. I'm not casual. This is business professional. So the headline is tax reduction, and I put Puerto Rico in small because I thought they were going to introduce this as the talk about Puerto Rico, and I wanted to turn it on its head, but that's already been done for me. And the message is really quite simple, and that is to answer Porter's question. And I, we, we don't have the time in 15 minutes to go into details, but I want to tell you that this is real. That's my message today, and you can ask me about it afterwards, we can talk about it more, but what are we talking about? So 500 years ago, when the Spanish were out and doing their bit of conquering the world, they found one of the great natural harbors in the world, and that was the harbor of, that is now San Juan in Puerto Rico, and that made Puerto Rico their crown jewel possession in this part of the world. Now, flash forward, and we may have a rebirth of the same concept, but on the financial front. Doug Casey, my boss, is fond of saying that the greatest threat that you face today is not market risk or any other kind of risk, it's government risk. And the greatest danger to you and your posterity is your own government. And where can you find safe harbor? Well, if you're not a U.S. citizen, there are actually quite a few places where you can find some measure of protection. But if you're a U.S. citizen, there is no place on earth you can escape from the long arm of the IRS, with the exception of Puerto Rico <laughs> or some U.S. territories. And that's the deal. Puerto Rico 
has, for over 100 years, had a relationship with the United States as not a state, but part of the U.S., where they have their own taxes, and therefore Puerto Rican income is exempt from U.S. federal income tax. This is not a new thing. It's not written in stone. It could be changed, but it hasn't been changed for 100 years. So think about that. Puerto Rican income, and key, Puerto Rican income is exempt from U.S. federal income tax. Now, for the longest time, this didn't matter because they, Puerto Ricans had their own taxes. A lot of socialism there, a lot of messed up things on that island, and they had to pay for it all. But recently, they ran into sort of the problem the European pigs had in that there was economic difficulty and they couldn't just print money. They used the dollar, and they don't control the printing presses. Bernanke had that for his friends. So what did they do? Well, we got to try to incent some kind of economic activity. We can't just pay for it with printed money. So what they did was they enacted a number of bits of legislation that are tax incentives to bring deep-pocketed investors, high net worth individuals, and companies to Puerto Rico. Uh, an almost incredibly rational thing to do. That's what Act 20 and 22 are all about. I'm here to tell you it's not fly-by-night, it's brand new. But before I get into anything else, I just shared 120 seconds about how wonderful Puerto Rico is. Let me tell you why not Puerto Rico. Because the last thing I want is for anybody to say later, oh, I moved to Puerto Rico because you told me to and I hate it. <laughs> and that could happen. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to go through all the bullet points, but let me just tell you a quick story. The, the, maybe for most people, the biggest thing is the language. You do not have to speak Spanish there. Most professionals there speak English. Many people get along without Spanish, but it is a Spanish-speaking place, and that is a culture shock. Obviously, for me, that's not an issue. Um, but the driving drives me nuts. They all either think they're Grand Prix drivers or they're ox cart drivers on the same road, and they cut you off, and they, they do all these crazy things. One time, I'm sitting there at a, at a red light, a very narrow road with cars, cars parked all over the place, and this guy in his truck comes blowing by me on the opposite traffic lane, and I go, wow, what a crazy guy, but I've seen that before. And then a cop comes blowing by after me, and I think, oh, finally, you know, I hate the cops, but, you know, I, these guys piss me off, and finally he's, somebody's going to get caught doing these crazy, dangerous things. And the cop does the same thing, goes right through the red light, just keeps on going about his business. It's just normal there. Um, it's very chaotic, and it's very disturbing to somebody who's used to a little bit more order in their life. But you know, they had a lot of order in Germany in the 1930s too, and I have to say there's, <laughs> there's something kind of refreshing about the fact that Puerto Ricans thumb their nose at the law all the time. They have no respect for the law. I kind of like these people. <laughs> so anyway, Act 20, the important thing to understand, you can read the bullet points or you have them on your downloads there, but the important thing to understand is that Act 20 is for companies. An individual does not benefit from Act 20. You have to set up a company in Puerto Rico, a Puerto Rican company that applies with the government and gets Act 20 benefits. And those basically amount to a 4% corporate earnings tax. And that can be as low as 3% if you have a very desired company. Um, now, the thing is, you know, the idea was to incent call centers and that sort of thing to come to Puerto Rico and, and create jobs. You don't have to set up a big business. Uh, you do need to create jobs. There is a three-job creation requirement now. But you do have to create a company. And you have to pay yourself. You can't pretend this isn't a tax dodge. Remember, this is legal tax reduction. So you have to pay yourself a reasonable wage for whatever it is that you do. Uh, but all the rest that comes through your corporate earnings is taxed at a very low rate. So your effective tax rate, if, if my own plan works out, it should come out at about 10 to 12% income tax per year. So, a lot I could say about that, but that's the gist. You have to set up a Puerto Rican company, it needs to create jobs, and if they like you, and they approve you, you have a very low tax rate. And they have to approve you. This is real. You know, you have to have a real business plan, you have to tell them what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, and they will hold you accountable. There are annual reviews. Again, this is not a tax dodge. This is a real incentive the government is offering to legitimate businesses that come to Puerto Rico. Lots of things you can do. You know, the idea is call centers, but it could be almost anything. The, the Act 20 is about exporting services. I am a writer. 
I now export my services as a writer from Puerto Rico to Stowe, Vermont, the headquarters of KC Research. So think about it creatively that way. Lots of things you can do. Act 22. By the way, the background are waves that I took on the beach that is about 50 meters from my house, my, my condo, my new condo there. So <laughs> I like Puerto Rico. Act 22 is for individuals, and it's all about residency. It's very, very simple. You move to Puerto Rico, you become a bona fide Puerto Rican, and they give you a, basically a 20-year tax holiday. I have at home, enshrined in a nice little folder, an official decree and contract from the government of Puerto Rico giving me zero, absolutely zero capital gains tax until 2036. I moved there four minutes before January 1st, 2014 and I'm heavily invested in the natural resource sector. And equities gains are based on residency. So if we're right about the market turning around, if we're right about buying at the bottom, you know, I haven't uh, taken any profits personally actually in several years. I've had, you know, underwater positions. If the market's turning around, then my move to Puerto Rico this year, I will have the entire 2014 tax year in Puerto Rico. And any gains I realize this year, or in the coming years, will be taxed at goose egg. This applies to many things, um, but the key is it's Puerto Rican. If I own stock in Coca-Cola, and Coca-Cola goes up, as a resident of Puerto Rico, my investment as a resident went up at zero capital gains tax. But if Coca-Cola pays me a dividend, that's U.S. income. My goal is to have no U.S. income or below the reporting threshold. It is my goal to not have to file a 1040 for this year. And by the way, that comes with not filing the FACTA form, too. There are also Acts 73 and 273. Rick, are you still here? The 273 is for financial businesses, sort of like Sprott Global. So the idea here is really quite simple. Puerto Rico can't print its own money. They were between a rock and a hard place, and lo and behold, they got sensible, and they tried to welcome people who could create value in their society. That's what this is all about. I want to tell you one more thing about this, and just uh, you know, how real it is. <laughs> um, I got to Puerto Rico, and I filed my application for Act 22, my, my capital gains tax, and I didn't hear from them. And I, I didn't even get an acknowledgement or receipt of the paper. So I called them up, and they said, oh, yes, we know, everything's fine. They, they, the person I called recognized my name. <laughs> and, and then a couple weeks later, I got the decree in the mail. They didn't even ask me any questions. They didn't even call me in for an interview. But here's the thing. I really moved to Puerto Rico. You can see. <laughs> I'm a Puerto Rican now. Actually, I say I'm a Puerto Rican now. I can't do it right. I don't have the accent right. Um, but I, I moved there. I bought a house there. It's my primary residence. I don't own a house anywhere else. It was very simple and straightforward. They didn't have any questions. In one month, I got my decree. I had to get a uh, sign uh, in front of a notary that I accepted the conditions. I'm an official Puerto Rican. I have to tell you, I was devastated that I can't vote for president of the United States anymore. Uh, so, it cost me 35 bucks in a notary fee, a $50 filing fee, and one first-class stamp. And my wife filled out the papers for me. <laughs> and she doesn't even speak English as her first language. So it was that easy. Now, other people have had more challenges, because as I say, you really have to be there. And if you're part-time in the U.S. or you have other things going on, you may have to explain yourself. Quickly, there are other benefits to this. Look at number one. Uh, on number two, I had an account with a Canadian brokerage, and because as an evil scum of the earth U.S. person, you know, they had a U.S. affiliate that I had to go through, you know, don't come in the back door. I mean, sorry, don't come in the front door. It's sort of like colored people come around here or something like that. Uh, and then I moved to Puerto Rico, and they called me up and they said, hey, you're still a U.S. person, but you're not a U.S. taxpayer anymore. Guess what? The front door is open now. You can have a real Canadian trading account now. True story. Um, if you move there, you can't get to number three, but if your children 
are born there, then there's no inheritance tax. Think about that for posterity. My wife, when we got there to first check it out, she said, you know, this is like Miami, but it's poor cousin. And it's really quite nice. Now, I have, uh, I have met several dozen people that have moved there to take advantage of this. I can say that there seems to be a real energy coming along. People are, are catching on on this. There may be a real estate boom shaping up. That's a, that's a forward-looking statement. Um, but if it is, remember, real estate is capital gains. If the house that we bought at the bottom doubles in value in a few years, guess what my tax will be on selling that house? Okay, so lots of good things going on. Let's see, more benefits. These are kind of more farther out there. Nobody freezes in a Mad Max scenario. You can read all these things. Puerto Rico is actually a very nice place. It has its scary aspects. It has its difficult aspects. But my final scene, I hope, will persuade you of the benefits of why I'm there. Uh, to me, this is an absolutely no-brainer. My wife and I were thinking of moving somewhere warmer. We were in the Vancouver area, rain six months out of the year. We were thinking Hawaii, maybe San Diego, hang out with Rick and Bonnie. Um, then Florida came up. There's no state income tax in Florida. Oh, that sounds good. And then we heard about Puerto Rico. And we came here, and this is what we saw. And it was just a decision that made itself. So for anybody for whom capital gains are a significant part of your financial landscape, this is something you should think about. The uh, Act 20 benefits is a little bit more complicated. You need to have that really well thought out. You need to work with the right lawyers and all that sort of stuff. If you email me, my email address is there. I can point you in the right direction. Or if you go to our sister website, internationalman.com, there's lots of articles that we've written about Puerto Rico, what to do, what not to do, and where to find more information. But what I'm telling you, and the most important thing, if you remember nothing else, is that this is real. Paulson's there. He's bought up all the real estate between Dorado and Condado. There's movers and shakers there. When, when I got there, real estate agents were desperate to talk to me. Now they're so busy, they don't always return the calls. Things are happening, and it's real. And I want to encourage everybody to check it out. Thank you very much.